Hello and welcome back to the Blue Geek Review channel. I am the Blue Geek and I am back with another update video. I've got six titles to show off this time. All bought for an amazingly good price. I think all in all I paid in and around £15 for the entire entire haul which is unbelievable when you consider some of the titles down on the show so let's not waste time and get straight to it the i'll start with what i um picked up yesterday uh i had some time to kill before i went to work so i popped into uh, one of the cx stores in my town center um, usually, um, when I go into CX, there's two things I go through first. First is the Blu-ray section, particularly, um, where I got these, it's a small store, so, um, everything's pretty tight together. There's a Blu-ray section, which is just basically one, one long shelf, um, and then you've got the 50p section. So I was looking through the 50p section. There were a couple of titles I could have picked up. Um, there was uh, Batman Superman Apocalypse. Unfortunately, even though the disc was in really good condition, uh, the case was actually cracked and broken. So I didn't really want to pick that one up. Um, likewise, I could have picked up the Shawshank Redemption. Um, there was a couple of other titles that I had spotted. Um, they had so many copies of the um, Ed and Senna documentary, the two disc edition with the slipcase. But um, looking through, I found these two titles. The first one is an, a DC animated film that I have wanted for the longest time but every time I find it <clears throat> it's either scratched to hell or the case isn't in the best condition or it's a little bit um, too pricey but I spotted this on the 50p shelf and my first thought was oh here we go again it's going to be scratched it's going to be in poor condition well, no, this was in mint condition. I finally, finally added it to the collection. It is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. And for those of you who don't know, this considered one of, one of, if not the best Batman animated movie of all time. Uh, basically, it's like an extended um, episode of Batman the Animated Series, as it features pretty much all of the um, cast from the show. So you've got Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Hamill as the Joker, uh, Dane Delaney's in this. Um, it's produced by um, Bruce Tim who's behind uh, the animated series and this is just a fantastic film haven't seen it um, for a long long time and what I didn't notice until um, I was looking at the cover um, I don't know if it'll pick up on camera but right there the way Batman is at the bottom here and where Phantasm's sort of head is featured at the top it actually forms an outline of the back cowl which is which I've never spotted until now but um, as far as special features go this is a uh, pretty rare bones it only has the trailer but that's okay, I have the film in the collection 
there's another one to add to my Batman movie collection. So definitely look forward to revisiting this. And this one, this was another main condition title. Um, <clears throat> I had seen the remake on the shelves. I thought, um, don't really want that. I was hoping it would be this version. Sure enough, looked a bit further along the um, the shelf, and this was here. And check the disc. Disc was mint. Instant buy. And that is the special edition release of Conan the Barbarian, starring the one and only Arnold Schwarzenegger. And this was actually um, Arnie's first ever film. Um, and it's got it's got a good cast alongside and James L. Jones, who of course everyone knows as the voice behind Darth Vader in the Star Wars franchise. He also voiced Mufasa in The Lion King. Um, it's also got Max von Sydow in, who is a great, um, great actor. Uh, so yeah, this from 1981, so it was three years before arguably his breakout role in The Terminator. <clears throat> um, it's one I've not seen since I was younger, you know, it was like, um, way I shouldn't have really been watching this when I was younger. Uh, as far as um, special features go, there's an audio commentary with director John Milius and Schwarzenegger. Um, there's a making of documentary, uh, deleted scene sequence, special effects split screen video, um, feature called Conan Archives, uh, theatrical trailers, production notes, um, cast and filmmakers pages, and then the um, Classic things you find on most old DVD releases to see and access in the interactive menus. So, definitely glad to have um, this in the collection. And for 50p, it was a no brainer. Uh, the other pickup from yesterday was a, a pickup from eBay. And this is a comedy film that stars one of my all time favourite horror actors, uh, Bella Gosi. Title I've never heard of, and that is Ghost on the Loose. Um, uh, basically, um, Lugosi plays a Nazi spy. Um, it features uh, the East Side Kids. I don't really know too much about them, but apparently. Uh, this film is from 1943, and they, the side kids and Lugosi had appeared together in Spooks Room Wild in 1941, another film I've not um, seen. It also introduces Ava Gardner, who's a um, fantastic actress. <clears throat> um, it looks, it looks to be a really fun movie. Um, didn't really cost me much. I think I only paid with postage around two pounds odd, which is not a bad price. Um, it looks to be just a bare bones uh, release. It doesn't say anything about special features, but it's another Lugosi film uh, for the collection. I do enjoy um any film that he features in. Outside of the Universal Monsters. Um, and on the subject of eBay, uh, the next three pickups are also from eBay, and these are absolute gems. Um, all, all in all, um, I think I paid around £9, £10 for all three titles. 
Uh, two of them came from the same song, so I'll start with them. Uh, these are two uh, Disney titles that I, that I didn't have in the collection. One on DVD, one on Blu-ray. Um, and I was amazed I got these so cheap. With the postage, um, they were £2.50 each, so only a pound uh, was the winning bid for both these titles. Uh, the first one is a film I've not seen since I was really, really young. You're talking like under 10. Um, but I couldn't pass it up. Uh, especially as it turned out to be the only bidder on it. And that is the 60th anniversary edition of getting shot, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, as I said, I haven't seen this since I was really younger. I don't really remember too much about it, other than clips that I've seen over the years on like Disney specials or online or whatnot. Um, so I'm looking forward to uh, revisiting this. I have plans at some point um, to sit down and have a uh, Disney Pixar marathon. I've got, I've got stuff like Phantom Nemo, Peter Pan, the Toy Story Trilogy. Well, uh, once it comes out in the home video, it'll be the Toy Story Quadrilogy. Um, of course, I've got all the Disney Christmas films. So, this one is going to be added to it. Um, only a couple of special features on this, which is a bit disappointing for an anniversary edition. But, um... A feature I call Reflections on Alice, which basically goes into detail about how Walt Disney um, came about uh, translating uh, the Lewis Carroll book into uh, the movie. I also has a brand new deleted scene called Pig and Pepper. So, very happy to have that in the collection. And this one. This is one of my all-time favourite Disney films. It's a, an absolute masterpiece of a film. And to finally get this on Blu-ray in the collection for their cheap. I mean, this in CX is, uh, is the same price that I paid total for it. But this is in far, far better condition. It is the Diamond Edition Double Play Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Beauty and the Beast. As I said, one of my all-time favorite Disney films. Um, it's just, uh, it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal film. And what, um, revisiting it. It takes me back to being a kid, seeing it for the first time. I mean, I was, uh, what, six years old when this first came out? And it took me a lot to actually um, enjoy this, because there used to be a TV series, um, also called Beauty and the Beast, which starred um, Ron Perlman as the Beast, and that it'd be a running gag in my nan my nan's house on a Saturday afternoon. Um, like the family would be down to visit me nan, and it was always a rule that um, I got to watch uh, my wrestling. Because um, at the time, all the syndicated uh, WWE shows be on um, on Sky, so I was allowed to watch all my wrestling and my man's as a fair deal. Once the wrestling was finished, um, my cousin um, she got to watch Beauty and the Beast, but uh, 
the beast in that TV show used to scare the hell out of me. So I was a bit hesitant um, to watch Beauty and the Beast, but when uh, Disney come out with this with this version, but I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, I've seen it that many times. It is just so memorable. And this uh, three disc set is absolutely loaded with special features. Um, it's a two, uh, two Blu-ray, one DVD. Um, the Blu-ray has three versions of the film, which is interesting. I'll talk on some detail on what the um, three versions are. I'm assuming that one version will be a sing-along maybe with their uh, lyrics on the screen um a feature called backstage disney damn edition composing a classic which is a conversation with about about the music in the film with um alan menken don hahn and richard Kraft. uh deleted scenes family play music and more and then on the second disc there's another backstage disney damn edition feature called Beyond Beauty, The Untold Stories Behind Making Beauty and the Beast. Um, there's uh, a game, and there's a classic DVD bonus feature called The Story Behind the Story. And then the DVD has um, three versions of the film, Music and More, as a classic DVD bonus feature, which is to view the film with uh, commentary by uh, directors Kirkwise and Gary Trousdale, producer Don Hahn and composer Alan Menken. So I'm very happy to finally have um, this as a permanent addition to my collection. But the final pickup, this was the gem. This was. This was just an absolute steal. I've had this on my Amazon wishlist for a long, long time. Um, 2016, this, came, this uh, was released. I think I've had it on my wishlist since 2017. Um, I've seen it. Um, the postage was really cheap on this. There's only three pound postage, and I ended up actually winning this for just two pound. This is a film that on Amazon goes for about fifteen to twenty pound. It sort of fluctuates in price, but I finally have it in the collection. It's a Roger Corman film. I have a few uh, Roger Corman titles in the collection. I also have a documentary about the man, so I couldn't, couldn't pass it up. Finally, drop money on it. it is bloodbath, and this this has an interesting backstory to it. This is from nineteen sixty six, um, and it's actually four different films. Um, because of uh, so much that went on um, in the making of it. Um, how it started, according to the synopsis on the back, um, Corman had invested in a Yugoslavian criminally, crimi picture called Operation Titian. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, just before I went into production, he insisted on it being filmed in English, so he sent um, William Campbell and Patrick McGee, who are the uh, stars of this film, over to um, Dubrovnik, which I believe is now in Slovakia, the part of Slovakia, um, and they were joined by um, the great 
trying to spoil Coppola, who is uncredited for the film as story editor. All three are coming off making another um, call and title called Dementia 13, which I also have. Um, they were sent over to Dubrovnik to make a US friendly movie, but apparently he wasn't satisfied with how it um, how it came out. So um, he had the film recut and rescored, and it was retitled Portrait in Terror, which became more of a driving um, movie. Um, which was then handed over to Jack Hill, who uh, been behind Spider Baby. Then it was given to Stephanie Rothman, who had done Tim Lowndes. Um, and that um, saw more reshoots and ended up turning the film into a vampire film called Bloodbath, which is where this gets its title from. But then there was one final version that was um, recut for TV and that became Track of the Vampire. And what makes it um, this set so amazing is that Arrow have actually tracked down and restored all four versions of the film. So Operation Titian, Portrait and Terror, Bloodbath and Track of the Vampire, all in high def. Portrait and Terror, Bloodbath and Track of the Vampire all have brand new 2K restorations from the original materials and Operation Titian has a brand new reconstruction using the original film materials and uh, standard def inserts so that is going to be interesting they all have different run times as well um, the longest version, which I'm assuming is Operation Titian, runs for 95 minutes. And then the film time goes down as being recut. So the shortest version, which I'm guessing might be Bloodbath, is 62 minutes. So basically an hour. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing all four versions and how they um, match up. Um, as far as the special features go, um, there's optional subtitle, English subtitles on all four versions. Um, a brand new visual essay by Tim Lucas, which um, he updates a three-part video watchdog feature that he done um, that examines the uh, production history of of the films. Um, a brand new exclusive interview just for this release with uh, Sid Haig. Um, an archive interview with Jack Hill. Uh, Stills Gallery and the classic Arrow. Um, Features. This actually has a double sided poster and a booklet, and also has the reverse artwork, so I'll show you all them. This was this the uh, poster. So that is the um, original poster for Bloodbath. I mean, gorgeous artwork. Amazing artwork. And then on the flip side is the uh, box art, which again is really nice artwork. And then you've got the booklet again featuring some really nice artwork. And um, this explains um, this has cast listings for all four versions. So you've got 
um, Operation Titian stars William Campbell, Patrick McGee, and some Yugos at the time Yugoslavian um, actors Rade Markovic, uh, Mia Bello, Vekoslav Afric, uh, Irena Prozen, and Manja Golik. Um, and then they were all replaced with portraits in terror. So joining Campbell and McGee were Anna Pavan, Kerry Anderson, Dante Girino, Mike Aston, Al Astar, Ray Baduzzi, and Don Brody. And then the cast changed again for the final two versions uh, Bloodbath and Track of the Vampire. Um, Only Campbell remained for the final two versions of the film. McGee dropped out, which is where Sid Hay come in. And they were joined by Marissa Mathes, Linda Saunders, Sandra Knight, Carl Shanza, Biff Elliott, Jonathan Hayes and Fred Thompson. Um, it's got... Um, uh, article about uh, William Campbell um, one about Patrick McGee um, one about Sid Haig and then some other little um, documents along with uh, details about the restorations so lovely um booklet to go through and then you've got the disc itself um that's the newly commissioned artwork i'm not sure whether i'm going to keep that or swap to the poster art which again is like the double-sided poster so yeah very very happy to have this as part of the collection um, I don't know when I'm going to get the chance to sit down and watch it. Probably keep it now um, for October for my um, traditional uh, horror month. But when I do sit down and watch it, I'll be watching all four versions just to see how they all differentiate. So that is it, that is everything I've picked up for this update. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you've seen any of the titles and what you think of them. Particularly if you've seen Bloodbath, let me know um, which films ma uh, matches the run times to give me an idea of which... Um, which to watch, and actually which version is better. So, uh, that is it. Um, I've been the Blue Geek. This has been the Blue Geek Reviews, and I will see you next time.